Hey friends. Let's see who's hanging out today. I cannot click on anything right now for some reason. Who knows? All right, here we are. Hello. There you is. <laughs> here I be. Um, Lee, will you tag Lydia? Por favor. And, you know, the usual suspects. Kind of thing. That would be fabulous. Um, today, we are going to color. Um... Yeah. Let's see who's hanging out. I know a bunch of people are probably at work. But I'm inviting people anyways. Yep, tag Jen. That would be awesome. All the people... We'll see who's hanging out. All right. So, um, this stamp set is called Hope This Year Doesn't Suck or Hope It Doesn't Suck. And this was actually um, my, I believe it was 2019. It might have been 2020. Um, this was my stamp set from my stamp class back then. So, like two years ago. I still have a couple of these in stock. It's actually one of my favorite stamp sets. I love it. Um, this says, sometimes I have to tell myself it's just not worth the jail time. And then this says, happy new year. Hope it doesn't suck as bad as last year. And then this one says, the world would be a nicer place if everyone just took a chill pill. It would be even better if some of them choked on it. And I feel like this is my, this is me today. <laughs> Um, not that I'm in a bad mood. I'm just in like a really weird mood. And so um, here we are. So that's what we're going to color today. So I have stamped her on sweet sentiment paper. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you. Um, and I have a slightly darker skin tone because um, I want her to have darker skin. I feel like the whole fro thing is speaking to me today. So, um, I usually color her as a pale skinned redhead kind of girl. Today I'm going to color her, um, as a dark skinned girl. And, um, we're going to really pull out this big old fro of hair, um, which I think is going to be amazing, which means I actually, somebody was asking, there it is, Pam, Pam wanted to see me color darker skin too. I think people are at work, but hey, we'll see. Okay, so I have E00, and um, I kind of like to color in stages since she has a lot of skin showing. Ooh, risque. A lot of skin. What are you guys up to today? Lee, what are you out doing today? Don't forget her ear. I always seem to forget her ear for some reason. I've colored this stamp so many times. And every time I color it, I love it more. I love her, her grumpy face. I love her um, versatility. Um, I love... There's just so many things you can do with this image for a card. Like, it's just amazing. You want to learn darker skin tones. It's 
it's hard in the beginning when you're doing darker skin tones because um, like this already looks a lot darker because it's just the white paper. So it looks kind of weird. Um, I am not doing this in the car. <laughs> I am home now. Um, so yeah, neater, neater. <laughs> um, anyways, so this is like super versatile and my marker is like super sticky. Crap. I hate when that happens. So she's going to be even darker skinned because I'm going to go darker still. Where's the marker that I want? There it is. Um, no, but so I just got back from getting my nails done, Lydia, which I know that you're not a huge fan of getting your nails done, but I just got back from getting my nails done and my nail salon is a pokey stop. So I set some lures and um, I didn't get anything good. I was kind of disappointed. And I finally, like I saw a Pokemon that I didn't even have and I tried to catch it and I was so excited. I gave it a berry. I tried to catch it with an ultra ball, like all the things. And guess what? It ran away. You don't need new tips or new markers. You need to refill them. Your hair salon is too. <laughs> right? I think that's how I pick salons based on if they're a pokey stop or not. If it's not a pokey stop, I don't want to spend like hours there. <laughs> So anyways, but I figured out I have like 57 regular lures from like back in the day, you know, from like 2018 when I used to play. And uh, yeah, so that's a thing. So I'm just laying the shadow down. Um, everywhere where I think there would be shadow. I know that her chin is going to leave a shadow on her neck. I know that her hand... Uh-oh. <laughs> Excuse me. It does hate us. It, it does hate us. I was so excited that I finally found a Pokemon, like, that I didn't have. And, um... I was like, yeah. And when I threw the the Ultra Ball, I was even more excited because I got a great throw. So it had a Golden Raspberry, an Ultra Ball, and, and a great throw. And it still ran away. And I was like wicked upset. Like my nail girl was like, what just happened? I was like, uh... Well, you see, <laughs> my Pokemon got away. All right. So now, if you notice, I'm using like little brush strokes in order to get these. There's Archie. In order to get this to blend. Um, I'm a one coat colorist. I don't like taking the time to color an image three or four times. <laughs> I ain't nobody got time for that. So I like to be a one coat colorist. So with that being said, I tend to saturate my paper a lot on the first go round. And oh, one of the neighbors is walking by with his super beautiful dog. He's got like a, um, it's like one click shy of being an albino pit bull. And, um, cause it doesn't have like the red eyes and the red nose. But other than that, it's completely washed out. And it's like this gorgeous color of like cool white. Um, and like pinky white. And it is like one of the most gorgeous pit bulls I have ever seen. And he walks this dog constantly. Like he's always walking this dog really good pet owner, unlike my other neighbor, who's a complete jackhole. You layer Copic coloring? 
Um, layering is great, except for when you oversaturate your paper. So, um, just be cognizant of that. But yes, most Copic colorists layer and layer and layer. And sometimes I will, sometimes I'll do a couple layers. Um, depends on what I'm coloring because it does make your coloring much more vibrant. Um, but I'm, I'm like squirrel. And so <laughs> I totally, um, I totally lose interest fast. I'm telling you all my secrets. So I have formulated my way of coloring to be single coat for the most part. So E11 is my next color and it's very pinky. Um, pinky, haha, <laughs> pinky in the brain. See, told you, squirrel. Um, it's very pink-ish, how about that? Compared to the other colors that we're using. And I like to put this color in because when you're coloring brown skin, I mean, the brown skin still has a very warm undertone. And at least most of the people I've come into contact with, that doesn't mean some people don't have a cool undertone to their brown skin. But most of the people that I know are come into contact with have a nice warm um, undertone to that brown skin. That have multiple things going on at the same time. My ADD brain works better that way. Right? Amen to that, sister. And so with adding this E11, it definitely warms the skin up. And I always feel like when you're coloring with the darker browns, especially in Copics, that it just cools the skin so much. I know that it's counterintuitive because it's brown and brown is a warm color, but I just feel like this adds so much more life. So that's why I do it. That's why I add these pink type colors in. you may choose to do it differently because believe it or not, there are no Copic police, right? Earth shattering stuff right there. Zero Copic police. They are not going to come after you and tell you that you did it wrong. Um, you could color her with rainbow skin if you want. Um, I've colored this girl as like an Irish girl multiple times because I had a friend in high school that, um, I swear to you, looked just like this girl. And I didn't even tell the artist. I didn't even tell Christy. It was just like when I got the artwork, I was like, oh my gosh, that looks like Allison. Um, and she was totally Irish girl, had a huge fro of super bright red curls. And when I saw this, it was like instantly where my mind went. I was like, oh my gosh, that is Allison's perfectly curly, bright red hair. And that is totally the expression on her face. I know, but I can't get over. Okay. So this is me telling you that I'm a total hypocrite. Are you ready? Huge hypocrite. Lydia will fill this entirely. Um, I tell everybody there is no Copic police. You do not have to worry about somebody coming to you and telling you you did this wrong. Who needs to hear that advice? But maybe about a different medium? Maybe about mm, watercolors or junk journaling or mixed media or basically everything that's not Copics or pencils? Hmm, I wonder who. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, big hypocrite. So I will sit here and tell you all day long and twice on Sunday that there are no Copic police and you don't have to worry about it. But I am that person when it comes to all of these other mediums, all of these other crafty, artsy mediums, because I am just 
I am just so afraid of them all. You're Irish and Scottish and you did not get the crazy curly red hair. I'm so sad that my son did not end up redheaded because my husband's redheaded um, and his grandpa is redheaded. So I'm guessing my grandbaby, if I ever get one, will be redheaded. I say if I ever get one because I don't know that I'll end up with a grandbaby. Um, yeah, I know you'll call me out, Lee. I know this about you. <laughs> okay, so back to that E27. And it's the same exact method over and over when you're coloring skin. It does not matter what colors you're using. Um, I once had a girl that only had a set of blue markers. That was it. She had Copic blue markers. She had B99, 97, 95, 93, 91. Okay. And she did all of my classes in blue markers. And so, oops, sorry. All the people had blue skin and blue hair. Thank you, Archie, for scaring me. I appreciate that. Um, and it was gorgeous. Like, girl straight up learned how to color. She went from nothing. Kittens. I can't have kittens either. My husband is insanely allergic. Like, so much so that if I go to Becky's house and play with Cheeto, that I have to, like, change my shirt or my husband, like, starts sneezing. So, yeah. But anyway, so she did everything with blue markers. And it was incredible. Absolutely incredible. So don't think you have to have the same color markers as me. Um, just find your blend. And how I showed you guys how to pick blends. That you find your center color, which is the true color. And then after that center color, you find your highlight and your shadow and then you find um missy you're allergic to achoo 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 um and then you find your bridge colors so those two in between colors a lot of people color with three markers and those three markers are um mid-tone highlight and shadow I don't, I like to have those bridge markers, those ones in between. And there's probably a real technical term for it. Um, my brain's just not adulting today. Words have been really hard for me today. Everything's been really hard for me today. You own all the Copics? Do you really, Lee? Good job. I do too, but that's not a shocker. I have full set syndrome, something hardcore. Lydia, do you own all the Copics? Do you have full set syndrome? Yes, five, seven, or nine. Always odd numbers. Look at that gorgeous skin. I want this skin. Unfortunately, I go out in the sun and I turn instantly to a lobster. Like it takes 6.4 seconds and I am lobster which is totally counterintuitive to my heritage because I'm mostly Native American. I am Cherokee, which is a super light-skinned Native American. But still, people who hung out in the sun all the time. And yet, there's just enough European in me to make me lobster up. How do you like them apples? 
I started collecting them prior to 2001. Do you still have the same markers from 2001? Sometimes you have to replace the markers. I had to finally show Becky how to refill her markers. Because she was, like, throwing away her markers. And I'm like, girl, what are you doing? And she was like, oh, it was making me mad, so I just threw it away. And I was like, that that's that's not what you do with a Copic marker. She's like, well, it was getting all sticky and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I know, because you got to refill it. And she was like, I tried, and it was still sticky. And she was putting, like, four drips of refill in it. Maybe six. I'm a hyperbolist. It's fine. Um... You don't color that. You can need to color. Pacey white, freckles, and sunburn hair. <laughs> it's preaching to the choir. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, so I had to school Becky on the whole refilling her markers and stuff. And so I went over there one day, and I spent a couple hours with her um, just refilling markers. It was actually really fun. Although at some point it looked like once we were doing the reds, it totally looked like we were murdering people and throwing them in her little office trash can. Um, so if you watch the Investigation Discovery shows, um, FYI, murdering people and throwing them in your little office trash can, not the right way to do it. <laughs> I have a couple of refills in stock, Lee. Um, they're not on the website, so you have to just text me. I know that I have um, YR14. And I know that I have Colorless Blender. Anyways, I was going to do a whole different other card today. But then when I got home, I just felt like coloring. I really just wanted to color. I think I needed a mental health moment. And mental health moments for me usually involve coloring. I can tell you I need to go through all of my e-markers and refill them. I'm also going to make rips in her jeans because I usually color her in yoga pants. And I'm going to make these like capris. And they're going to be capris that have knee rips. So, that's what I'm going to do. Oh, I think we've learned the proper procedures. IDGL, yeah. <laughs> and oxygen and um, many. I was actually telling <laughs> Archie, dang you. Do you see me jump when he does that? You would think that I would be used to it by now. Anyways, um, I was telling my nail girl, um, cause she watches a lot of ID channel and stuff too. And she watches a lot of TikTok. Um, but I was telling her that I'm like, if you like were a fly on the wall in my house, you would think that my husband and I like absolutely hated one another. Um, because we always talk about killing each other. Um, and my husband, for those of you that don't know, is a detective. And so not only do, do we watch the murder shows on ID channel and stuff, but he's actually like lived that life. He actually like, you know, knows what, what the deal is. And for those of you that don't know too, I worked 10 years in law enforcement. I wasn't a detective. Um, I was a dispatcher. 
and I was on a major crimes task force, and I was on the hostage negotiation team. And, um, you know, so, like, we were exposed to that stuff, like, a lot. And so, we'll sit on the couch and, you know, like, surf Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram. That's when I do most of my commenting is when I'm sitting there um, surfing and watching murder shows. So know that all of my comments come from a super, uh, super happy place. <laughs> um, he was a homicide detective, yes. Um, in California, he was, and he's done a couple here in Idaho as well. Um, in California, all detectives are pretty much homicide detectives. That's just how it goes. Well, in the counties that we were in, how about that? Um, like his very first detective case was a double homicide arson type scenario. So like he, you know, came out the door swinging sort of thing. Um, anyways, I'm going to use the chisel nib of this only because my, um, brush nib is doing funky things right now. So you're going to see me adapt and overcome. So anyway, so we sit on the couch and we're always like, oh, he did that wrong, or oh, that's not a thing, or, um, and they're little reenactments, you know, like the other night it was a case in Florida, and they used a California Highway Patrol car, and we're like, um, that's a chippy car, that is not a Florida Sheriff's Department car, but things that, like, the normal person really wouldn't see, um, that's what we see, and so we're like, um, that's clearly an actor and not a cop because he would totally not carry his gun like that. Um, you know, just like totally. And then we'll tell each, well, if I was going to kill you, what I would do is, you know, blah, 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 blah. And make it so that it's, you know, like the case that they're working on on the show, but different. <laughs> or like where the person went wrong. <laughs> Actually be a detective. Um, actually being a detective is kind of a disgusting job. Like when you go into somebody's trailer, like they live in a trailer or mobile home or a double wide or, you know, something like that. And you live in a climate where it's, you know, 115 degrees in the summer and they have like five cats and they've been in there for a couple of days because somebody just now called and the person's dead and their cats are hungry or were hungry and cats are wild animals. So they make do with what they have. You can see where I'm going with this and the trailer's like an oven because it's 115 degrees outside. Being a detective is not a happy job. Yeah. See, so, you know, you know exactly what they would do and how they do it wrong on the show. And <laughs> It's just a thing. It's just a place that you go. So, yeah, you would think my husband and I really don't love each other. And then he's always like, and then call this place because I have, you know, this life insurance. And call that place because I have that life insurance. And, you know, because as a police officer, you have life insurance from several different places. Um, especially nowadays because it used to be people respected cops. Um, I was raised to respect and fear cops. Not fear like, I don't know, hard to explain, but like do the right thing so you don't get pulled over kind of thing. You know, like a healthy fear, like fear of God kind of thing. Not saying cops are gods, but still, you know, have respect. And uh, that's just not how it is nowadays. So, yeah. That's me rambling. And I worked for a sheriff's department, so I know there are jerks out there. There are people that as soon as they put on that uniform, they become total, you know what? Um, trust me, as dispatchers, we try to keep those guys in check. Those are guys that get the crappy calls <laughs> until they learn to be nice. <laughs> Uh, like, you better be nice. 
They're just doing a job, right? Just like EMTs and firefighters, just doing a job. Just like me, sitting here coloring, just doing my job. I think we all watch too much ID channel. I think that, and oxygen and all that stuff, like we know what not to do. Or at least by now we should know what not to do. If you haven't learned by now, like what's up? <laughs> Jen, hello, you miss me rambling about murdering my husband. <laughs> That's a lot of love, man. If you and your spouse can sit there and talk about murdering one another, it's a lot of love. All right. So now her skin is done. And um, I'm going to color her jeans next. Because that's how I feel. I usually don't. I usually will do the hair next. Um, and I always do the eyes last. And it drives some people absolutely insane. Um, did you need that information, Lydia? I have a ticket number. Aww. Okay, so if you subscribe, the first email newsletter just went out. It just came to my mailbox. I'm so excited. Wicked excited. I almost said that in like a Boston accent. Like, wicked excited. Wicked. We all love ID channel. I think I've seen pretty much everything though. Like I need ID 2.0. Because I've watched like every, you know, American monster and fear thy neighbor. And I almost feel like I'm going to be living in an episode of fear thy neighbor soon. Which will give them new material. So, hey. taken one for the team my neighbor did a mean thing to his dog the people that live behind me and I saw it and now like it just makes me sick and I can't get over it and so if I see something like that happen again like it's on like Donkey Kong you don't mess with animals around me and all the people in my Pokemon Go group are all like yeah we'll go kick ass with you <laughs> right? New shows needed. So. So yeah, there's that. I'm so just rambling today. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just like straight up rambling. That's what you tuned in for though, right? You got the newsletter. Yay! I'll watch those too. Really like those shows. Yes, Linda Liu Hu. So when I went to Texas um, and um, stayed with Sandy and we went to a um, craft show there, like, whoa, like two or three years ago, was it, Linda? Um, you need the distraction. We... Um, Linda is Sandy's mom. So Linda Lou is like an extra mom to me because she got to adopt me whether she wanted to or not. 
um, because she's my best friend's mom. So, you know, that's how all that works. And so, um, Sandy was like, you have to watch this show. It's called The Act. And Linda and I were like, all right, well, come to find out Linda had seen like a couple episodes of it. And it's like a docuseries. And it's the, the, uh, Gypsy Rose story, not Gypsy Rose, the stripper. Um, I have to make that clear because I told, um, Sherry and Mickey and Candy about it. And they thought I was talking about Gypsy Rose, the stripper who apparently was like some famous stripper, not the same girl. Um, this is Gypsy Rose Blanchard and, um, her mom like made her think that she had all of these terrible illnesses and that she was like wheelchair bound and had a feeding tube and um there's an actual technical term for it but I forget it right now right it's so creepy so Linda and Sandy and I we would come back from the craft show um we would spend all day at the craft show and then we'd come home and we'd watch like 3 hours of this show because I think there's like 6 episodes I think it's like a 6 something 6 7 something like that and each of them is like an hour hour and a half long so it was definitely bingeable without being like over the top but it is creepy as get out like you watch it and then you almost have to turn it off and like digest what just happened or what just went on with the whole scenario. But then you're like addicted. Yes. Yes. Mun Munchausen. Is that how you say it? Something like that? Yeah. So it's exactly what it is. So anyway, so we watched this show and we couldn't stop. And then the last day we were like, we have to go home early because they had to take me to the airport. And so we were like hurrying up to try to get, I was almost late for my flight because we had to watch the last episode. Um, and it was like amazing. And so you have to watch, it's called The Act and it's on HBO, I think. Um, oh my God, it is creepy and it's real story. I mean, it, it actually happened. Um, oh my God, it's so creepy amazing true crime I love true crime and I don't think we're gonna have any shortage of true crime Munchausen by proxy yeah oh it's on Hulu that's right it is it's on Hulu it's a Hulu exclusive or whatever um so good you have to watch it like all of you, blanket recommendation. Everybody must watch the act. And then afterwards, there's like a interview um, with Gypsy. And like the actress that plays Gypsy, freaking phenomenal. Like sounds just like her. It's incredible. Look at me, I'm all over the top and excited about true crime. And it didn't happen all that long ago. I want to say it was like the early 2000s. I have all the streaming. All the streaming. Okay, watch the act. Have you seen it, Lee? What can you not get, Lydia? came across my screen. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do one of my favorite colors of dark hair. Um, and it's like this crazy, Sandy Ledoux who I was just talking about the act and how we almost missed my flight because we were watching it. Um. <laughs> oh my god, I have such ADD, you guys. Today is super duper bad for some reason. Um, I said I was going to do one of my favorite colors of hair, but now I'm not. I'm already changing my mind. So just bear with me. And don't hold it against me.
Okay, we're gonna do, you've seen it twice, right? Yeah, she did look a lot like Gypsy too. Oh my gosh, Lee, I expect you to watch. Um, oh, was that you, Lee? I thought it was uh, Lydia. <laughs> so like I saw it flash across my screen. Um, so I'm going to do this cool brown blend. I was going to do like a, a midnight plum kind of blend, but I've changed my mind and I'm going to do like a dark, dark brown. So this is BV29, E49, E59, E74, and E34. Okay. So this is going to be a cool, really nifty color. I'm like super nifty, both of you. Why well, you guys got to be in the Pokemon group when I can't be in the Pokemon group? Why it's got to be like that? Okay, so the artist has drawn like these, you know, cool lines in here to kind of give us a guide, but she's also left it very, very open. This is so you can decide what you want to do. A lot of people will just do like little squiggly lines and stuff and make this like a big fro. Um, I really, really love the girls that do like the crazy huge ringlets and stuff. And um, they do like a ton of ringlets in their hair and then it makes it like this huge thing. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So that's what I'm going to do with this girl's hair. So I'm taking my BV29 and I'm going along these artist drawn lines to make this into a ringlet. So you can see I'm using teeny tiny brush strokes. And I'm going with the way the hair would grow. Okay. That's the most important part when you're doing hair. Is you want to make sure that you're going the direction the hair would grow. So you can see like all of these are down swooping until I get to here. And then they swoop this way. Okay. Um, yes. BV29 is my most favorite marker ever in the whole wide world. Because it is a chameleon. If you put it next to brown, it looks brown. If you put it next to purple, it looks purple. If you put it next to pink, it turns pink. It is such a chameleon marker, and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous shadow color. And so Jen remembers that from being here and me talking for like five minutes about my love affair with BB29. So I'm just gonna go across all of these that are most readily evident to me. Um, as I go around doing this hair, this is the stuff that, um, that will make you crazy, Lydia. <laughs> you give me panic attacks, I shall make you crazy. Turnabout is fair play. <laughs> um, this fine, fine, fine little detail is something that is a learned behavior. Um, the only reason, the only difference between you and me is I've spent a lot more hours with a Copic marker in my hand. So if your lines on this are not as fine as mine, don't stress out about it. That will come with time. But so see how I'm kind of using those artist drawn lines to make um, make these big ringlets kind of come to life. So I'm just using those lines that are already there and making them sort of naturally come into these ringlets. I guess when you first start, they kind of look like dreadlocks. I have a friend. Um, her name is Jen. Jenna, and she has the most amazing dreadlocks I have ever seen. They are so gorgeous. Um, she's like a total fitness guru, and she's so much fun, and um, totally not hippie or anything at all that would be that kind of stereotype super into like health food and um like any stereotype that you have of somebody with dreadlocks like throw that out of your mind because she is not that person and so it's really funny to um kind of see people judge her by the way she looks 
because she totally looks like she could be, you know, like granola muncher, hippie, pothead kind of girl. And that is not who she is. She's like super strong, all into working out, um, eats red meat, <laughs> you know, like drives through the drive through kind of thing. Like, yeah, she's awesome. She has the best personality. I love her. It makes me miss her. I haven't talked to her for like months. Again, Jamie randomly rambling about something that makes no sense. It's all good. Now, you will see this hair really take shape once I start putting the other colors in. So right now I'm just kind of masking off um, or marking off where I would be putting the hair, um, the shadows of the hair in. So I'm using those artist drawn lines. I am confusing myself, like all the things. And the cool thing about ringlets is you know that they're brighter in the front and they shadow on both sides, no matter where the light is, because they're round. And so since this is a big, wide open spot, I'm just gonna follow this previous, the shape of this previous ringlet down. And then I get lost um, doing hair. I, coloring hair is like my absolute most favorite thing to do. None of you are commenting, just so you know. <laughs> hair is my most favorite favorite thing to color um, because it's super intricate. Um, you have to kind of focus on it. You, do you like that? Do you want me to just do half and half so you can see the difference or do you want me to go full Monty? Um, you're mesmerized. You mesmerized by me talking or have you turned the volume off by now? See, Lydia, that's how I feel when you're doing, like, the watercoloring and stuff. I'm totally mesmerized. Because <laughs> it is not anything in my wheelhouse. Coloring hair just makes me happy. And that's why I chose this image, because it has she has so much hair. And so that's really what I wanted to color. We all have that like go-to image, full Monty, ringlets all the way. Um, we all kind of have that like go-to image or that go-to like genre um, of images that like just make you feel better to color and hair like images that have crazy amounts of hair are just my thing like some people are all about the florals um some people are all about like little critters and cartoony things I am all about the hair And this is something you definitely want to have both caps off while you're coloring um, so that you have more control over the amount of ink that is coming out of your marker. Um, that's a big thing with Copic markers and especially if you have super warm hands 
because the science geek in me is going to come out here a little bit. Um, your hands will warm up the ink inside the barrel of the marker. And so it'll make those molecules go from being super sluggish and slow to running around super fast. And that can make your marker, um, like, that's a technical term. And so if your marker does that, you get a big blob. And you don't want that. So if you are super hot-handed, um, you might want to have like an ice pack on your desk when you're coloring that you can put your hand on. Don't put your marker on it. Um, but you can put your hand on it like in between coloring to let your barrel cool down and let your hand cool down um, and prevent the blobs from happening. Um, also, there's a certain amount of pressure inside the barrel of the marker. So if you let air into both ends, it'll equalize that pressure and um, it'll give you more control over the amount of ink that is coming out. Everything you didn't know that you didn't need to know about Copic markers by Jamie. Hair is definitely a work in progress always. Um, I always feel like I can improve on hair and it's my favorite thing to color. So don't be frustrated, um, just color more hair. Find those images that have massive amounts of hair, um, just like I did, and just start coloring them. They, to me, they calm my mind because it's like, a, oh my gosh, an ice pack on your RA would kill you. Um, <laughs> don't do that if you have RA. Um, but to me, it quiets my mind um, because I really have to focus on it. So somebody like me who has anxiety disorder, um, coloring hair like really became something that I could use as like real therapy. Everybody says art is therapy. Well, coloring hair became a real therapy for me um, because I learned how to use it to quiet my mind. And I really, really love that about coloring hair. And then once you get all of these kind of put in here, um, it will start to go together really fast. Like the hardest part about all of this is laying in that shadow. And then the hair comes together really fast. And that's part of why I totally love hair um, because it does come together and it looks amazing. So right now it kind of looks like a hot mess. Um, because it's just this dark, you know, blackish purple color. And so it doesn't have a lot of contrast. It's just basically black and white. But that is getting ready to change once I start putting these other colors in. And notice I turn my paper a lot. Um, when, once you find a spot or an angle which your wrist is comfortable in, you wanna keep turning your paper so that you can keep your wrist in that, that kind of area. Because if you're trying to color all like, I don't know, it's just not going to work. You're not going to get those brush strokes that you want. You're not going to get that texture that you want. Um, so find a place where your wrist is comfortable and then color from that direction. And... Again, there's no Copic police that are going to come and say that you're doing this wrong. So. All right. So there's all of our ringlets.
Are you guys still with me? Or are you all like sleeping? E49 is a super, super, super dark brown. Okay, so here's my trick with adding depth and dimension to the ringlets. You're gonna pick where the sun is coming from. Usually the sun is coming from like this direction, right? Like she's gonna be looking towards the sun-ish. So it's gonna be like this direction. So I'm gonna come through the underside of all of these and I'm gonna use this E49 to shade the underside. You guys with me? We are here. Jen is here. Thank goodness. It's weird when it gets all quiet. Because I don't know if you guys are like, I don't know, enjoying yourselves or not. Okay, so now I did the underside of all of those. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here, but if the sun was coming this way, it's gonna be like this side is in shadow. So I will rotate my paper on this again so that my wrist is comfortable, but I'm also, I'll return it to center a lot so that I can put my head back on straight to see which way the sun is coming from. And you notice I'm doing this a lot faster. because I've already done the hard work of laying in my shadows. And so I don't have to focus so much on what's going on in those shadows. So I don't know if you can see a whole lot of difference in that. It's for me, but that was probably because I don't have the experience. It is. Um, it's been great, but I have to scoot to class. It would be more fun to stay, though. <laughs> um, we'll see you soon, Misty. Um, work is keeping you busy. So this is E59. And so I'm going to start shadowing from both sides now. You're going to start seeing this come together really fast. Okay, Lydia, my color guru, what color do I make her shirt?
I know Lee will say pink. And I know Sandy will say purple. But Lydia, you like really would know. Like what would be the most pleasing to the eye? Jen, you'd actually be surprised um, green or turquoise. Okay. Um, I feel like I can, my color, the hair, is that dumb? I feel like I can, what? Try that again, Jen. Um, and Jen, you would actually be surprised at how not tedious this is. It's actually really cool. And, um, it might seem tedious when you're not doing it. Um, when you're just watching it. But for me, I actually totally love this process. Oops, I just knocked over my marker caps. Okay. I can only color hair I have. What do you mean you can only color hair you have? <laughs> you can only color short hair? Okay, this is E74. And again, make sure you're going with the direction. You can really see this start to come together now. God, I love her hair. Um, notice I'm still leaving white in between. I am going all the way across the highlight on some of this, on most of it, but I am still leaving white because I have one more color and it's a warm brown. I love mixing my cool and my warm brown, so this is a cool color. But it's a warm brown to really bring in that highlight. The newsletter is awesome. Like blondes and straight. Blondes are really hard for me. Now this is E34. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill in. all of those white spots. Now, sometimes if I've washed things out, I'll go back through with that shadow color and add some shadow back in. Um, but this one really hasn't. So I will not be doing that. 
but that is one of the only times that I will do a second coat on stuff. Not one of the only times, but one of the few times. How about that? And there you go. Look at all that hair. Isn't that fun? I did get my nails did. Don't you love that? I do. I just I I just love coloring this kind of hair. It just makes me super happy. Okay, so a teal color for her shirt. Oh, and while you have your markers out, um, I'm gonna use the E74 for her eyebrows. Okay, yes, teal, okay. Teal it is. Um, we could do this one because it uses BV29 as well. Or well, how about this one? I like that one. Tasteful teal. 18, 13, 34. Eighteen, thirteen, thirty-four, eleven, and ninety. All right, Lydia. I'm totally gonna be coloring right up to the time of your live. I bet you. Then I can go get a cup of coffee and watch you so that you can give me my daily panic attack. I really loved the journal you did yesterday though, the journal page. Was that yesterday? Yeah, that was yesterday. I didn't think I would, like the way it started out. I was like, uh-oh, here we go. And then I ended up totally loving it. So maybe there's hope for me. Hopefully there's hope for me. You're gonna miss Lydia's? Why are you missing Lydia's life? Why? I need my peanut gallery there with me. Ooh, I'm off the screen again. This marker is super juicy. Oh, PT. Physical torture. They just replaced your knee. Doesn't it work yet? I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. What I like to do is there is an artist drawn line there, but um, down here. So first of all, I'm going to draw a line of where the shadow would be. But secondly, there's like indentations in her shirt. So to me, that shows where the material would be kind of folded over on itself. So I like to add that little bit of detail. Just like that. Okay. 
James has to work and can't take me twice a week, so I have to drive myself. Ew. All right, so this is BG13. And so my method with this is a little bit different. I'm going to be pushing all of this color back. So all of this shadow, I wanna push it back towards where the shadow goes or where the shadow belongs. Because if I keep dragging it out, I'm gonna muddy my highlight. So I wanna keep pushing it back. So what I do is I will push it or I will pull it and that makes me wanna sing salt and pepper. <laughs> But make sure that you're keeping that shadow in the shadow. And my pen is getting juicy, so I'm gonna take off both caps. Do all of you have that song stuck in your head now? You're welcome. So keep working on those shadows. The other thing I do is add a little shadow where her chest would separate there. I don't know, because I don't have a large chest, but hey, we're gonna assume. There we go. You guys kill me when you're super quiet like this. You have half a chest. <laughs> I love you, Jen. That makes me smile. That you can joke. That song's totally stuck in my head now. Earworm. Now this is the third color in my blend, so I'm gonna be way more liberal with this color um, because since it is the third color in my blend, it's the true color of her shirt. So basically, um, it's the color that does not have any highlight or any shadow on it. It's the absolute true color. And so I'm gonna use a lot more of this color so that the shirt reads as this greenish teal color. singing that all day. I need a laugh or I'm going to cry. Girl, amen to that. I'm always good for a laugh. You can laugh at me. Like I am straight up okay with you laughing at me because yeah, I'm laughable. <laughs> I'm okay being the comic relief. It's part of my charm. All right, so we're blending this out. Again, still pushing it or pulling it into the shadows. I always feel indecent. Like, I'm coloring her boobs, man. It just makes me feel indecent. <laughs> now you're singing it. <laughs> what can I say except you're welcome? There you go, you can sing that one now. 
But when I'm coloring images of, you know, people, I always feel indecent, like, when I'm coloring, you know, private areas. And then I'm like, did I make her boobs too big? Did I make his pants bulge? <laughs> That's for you. I do that so much. I laugh at myself every dang day, right? It's a thing. It's totally a thing. All right. And then I have my BG90. And yes, I'm doing circular blending here on her boobs. On her mammaries. That's probably why she's irritated. She's irritated with me for coloring her. Do you guys ever talk to your stamps when you color them? Just me? Okay. Ask him for a friend. All right. So there's her shirt. Now, um, I'm going to add some pink to her lips. Ooh, does she want red lips? I happen to have a red blend just sitting here. Um, embrace the indecency, right? <laughs> so she's going to have like some fiery red lips. So R39. We're talking like Gwen Stefani red here. Which, by the way, I love. I have like a hundred different colors of red lipstick. And I always ask like the girls at Sephora or whatever. I'm like, I want like Gwen Stefani red. And I haven't found the right red yet. Um, so you can see. Leaving room for the highlight, R29. I talk to everything. <laughs> I talk to Pokemon when I try to catch them. Especially new ones that I don't have. That run away from me. They get called bad names. Names that Pokemon probably should not be called. All the time. And the pens and the paint. <laughs> uh, see, Jen, come here. We're good for a laugh. Welcome to Sweet Sentiment. I will make you laugh. Look at that. She's like super pissy. Okay. And it does look super weird without her eyes being done. So just bear with me for a moment. I'm going to grab my multi-liner and I'm going to add her pupil in. Then um, I have all of these lovely colors around me. So I'm going to use some of these lovely colors. Of course, I don't have the ones that I want. I always try to just use what's on my desk. That's some serious sass going on, isn't it? I always try to use what's on my desk and then, you know, forget that I have 358 other markers that I could be using. And for those of you that asked, I actually love what happened to her pupil. What do you mean what happened to it? Um... I actually love having my markers behind me. I know it seems very odd, but I actually really do love having my markers behind me um, because the way I color, I pick out um, marker blends. So it's actually helped me keep my space a little bit cleaner. So her eyes are going to look terrible before they look better. So just bear with me. So I've added like teeny tiny brush strokes um, 
why you have to color color it again. Okay, looks like little spiders in her eyes. Um, what happened to her pupil? Why do you have to color it again? Oh, because I um, am using a no line technique. So I stamped in desert sand. So her pupil kind of disappeared because it's a light brown color. And so I colored it black so that you could see it. Okay, then I take the blue and I put the blue in there. Again, her eyes look like a hot mess. Now I'm gonna take this G triple zero. And I'm gonna oversaturate it. And give her kind of bluish hazel eyes. Then since I colored over it 100,000 times, I'm gonna add her pupil back in. And I'm gonna add her eyeliner. And then I'm gonna add some lashes. I usually add three or five. Then, I know this is like splitting hairs, but I always do this. Uh, C2 into the corner of her eye. Colorless blender. And this gives her eyeball that kind of rounded shape because the whole side of your eye is not white. So it just adds that little bit of extra oomph. Thank you. And then, just because, you know, I'm all into the details here, I take my white jelly roll, and I actually found a jelly roll that is above par for all the rest. Um, this jelly roll is from Pear Blossom Press, and I absolutely love it. It works. I add highlights. And I always touch them with the tip of my finger when it's like on her red lips or whatever, just to tone them down a tiny bit. And then Adding the threads to the rips of her jeans. All right. Now, if you want to get really froggy, you can add eyeshadow too and all of that kind of stuff. I'm not like that into adding all the makeup. You could put rouge on her cheeks and, you know, all of that scenario. But for me, I'm going to call her finished. Um, I love the way that the ripped jeans look. I love the way that her lips just kind of popped and brightened the whole thing. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit. There you go. And there she is. So there's all the crazy ringlet hair. Um, there's my therapy session. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Um, have fun at PT, girl. <laughs> I don't know if have fun is the right word, but hey, have fun. Um, thanks, Jen. I appreciate it. Thanks, Linda. So thank you guys for joining me today. And again, I will post this on YouTube so you guys can see it. Um, this was the sometime, or I hope this year doesn't suck, um, stamp set. There's not a whole bunch of these left in stock, so if you want one, I suggest you get it, um, because it will not be remade once it sells out. 
And um, that's everything. So in about a half an hour, I think Lydia will be live in the Understand Blue group. So you can catch me over there. I will be watching and drinking coffee. Um, and check your email for the brand new Sweet Sentiment newsletter I'm super excited about. And I'm going to go read mine as well. So I will talk to you guys all later. See you tomorrow. Toodles.